This video is brought to you by my T Public page. That's right, I'm advertising myself now because I figured why not. Welp, here we are in a video that a lot of people asked for more than I really would have ever in my life thought. I don't know why so many people are into the Ultimate Universe outside of anything really except for Spider-Man. Go ahead and comment why uh, you're into the Ultimate Universe in the comments below. And before I begin, if you could just like this video, I'd really appreciate it. Released in 2001, written by Mark Miller, or Millar if you want to annoy him, with art by Andy Kubert, this is Ultimate X-Men Volume 1, The Tomorrow People. <laughs> the book begins in a city somewhere maybe los angeles or san diego or something i don't know there's palm trees this man eating an ice pop and walking his dog looks up to the sky as at least 11 sentinels fly above the city for anyone uh unaware sentinels are these giant killer robots that are designed specifically to hunt down anyone who has the mutant gene and n no not not her not gene gray no i meant like g-e-n-e and exterminate them. Sometimes they'll get captured, but that's usually only if they are a main character. The Sentinels, they just start blasting people. I started blasting. Bah, wow. bah. Well, I don't see so good, so I missed. Then they ran away. I ran after them. Okay. Bang! Try to shoot them in the back. But I don't want so good either. And the man and his dog are launched away after an explosion throws them into the air. A sentinel lands before the crumpled man and then scans him, and the scan comes up as a confirmed mutant. Then the sentinel steps on the man and his dog. Cut to San Diego. A guy in a bar who kind of looks like Greg Capullo chalks his pull cue and makes fun of Hank McCoy for being a mutant. The ruffian gets ready to rack Hank on the back, but Hank performs an acrobatic flip out of the way and kicks the guy in the face with his giant gross feet. Bar owner whips out a shotgun and orders Hank to leave the bar and... Huh. Where have I seen this before? Oh, yeah. Get out of my bar for you. As Hank leaves, he passes a young woman with red hair and a pixie cut, and she asks if he ever wonders what it would be like to live in a place that doesn't fear or hate him. Then she calls him by name, and Hank asks who she is, and the woman tells her that she's the best thing that's ever happened to him since the size 42 Reebok. Cut to... Athens, Texas! Yeah! The woman in weirdly revealing clothing walks into a sheriff's office and meets Deputy... Dog? Really? Oh, whatever. The woman... Okay, look, this is Jean Grey. This is what is what Jean Grey looks like in the Ultimate Universe. <laughs> Jean carries a blockbuster video card, a reference which will never fall apart and makes the deputy see it as a FBI badge, and makes herself appear as a middle-aged federal agent. Then she asks to see the mutant they have arrested. They walk into the fucking the, the cell room, whatever it's called, I can't remember. Anyway, it, it's Storm. This is Storm. Storm's been locked up. Uh, Jean knocks out the deputy and frees her. Cut to New York. Pyotr Rasputin and his Russian colleagues prepare for an arms deal when a helicopter flies out of nowhere and unloads on everybody, killing them all except for Colossus. He just stands there with his clothes ripped from his metal form, and I, th I think he starts crying or something, and then Gene appears. <laughs> Cut to the Xavier Institute for Gifted Children. Scott Summers introduces himself to the X-Men. Fuck are these outfits? Good lord, how much baby powder do these people need to use to get into those things? And why do they all have weird thigh holes in their pants except for Cyclops and Beast? Apparently, these suits are some sort of cloaking device that allows them to remain undetected by sentinels? Why are they so skimpy? Is Professor X a pervert in this universe too? Probably. I'm pretty sure he confesses his love for Jean, a 19-year-old girl in a later story. Anyway, uh, yeah. And if you're wondering how they keep the secrecy of a mutant school from these construction workers, don't worry. Professor X is just abusing their thoughts and making them fucking, I don't know, slaves, I guess? Cyclops leads the team into the library, which looks nothing like a library and is actually just Cerebro with a giant fireplace on one side. And they meet Professor Charles Xavier. 
Storm talks shit about their dumb code names and says that she doesn't like them. Professor X says that they have been rebaptized as a post-human being. Professor X uses Cerebro and discovers a 15-year-old runaway mutant named Bobby Drake. Cut to Times Square. The team walks around looking for Bobby, and then Beast spots the boy on a bus. How does Beast do this? Well, he's riding on top of a cab. Way to keep a low profile. Oh, and look at that. The advertisement is for Beauty and the Beast. Ain't that clever. Ain't it clever. Then Sentinels show up. One of them picks up the bus, so Beast leaps through it and swipes Bobby out of the way before the bus is just incinerated with, I'm sure, everyone else on board. Then Storm brings down the power of lightning and strikes the Sentinels. Cyclops is like, holy shit, you just took out three Sentinels at once. How did you- oh, you passed out. Beast leaps around, dodging sentinel strikes as Colossus and Jean fight some others, and Cyclops tries to get Storm to safety. They fight some more, and the team is about to be vanquished when Bobby Drake uses his ice powers and freezes a sentinel. Beast holds him up in excitement like a prized fighter and deems him Iceman. And then Bobby's hit in the head with a glass bottle, and a lynch mob forms, and the X-Men flee as a police officer opens fire at them. Cut to the Savage Land. Magneto watches the news footage in his television screen room. Magneto tells him that Charles has finally resurfaced and established a little base in North America. Then he orders Quicksilver to get an assassin to find and kill Charles before he can get any more mutants. And that assassin is... Wolverine! Bub. Later, at JFK International, Wolverine disembarks and finds his handler, I guess, and they walk to a car, and then are riddled with bullets and die! Meanwhile, the X-Men haphazardly fly through New York in their Blackbird, and when they return to the mansion, they find Cyclops firing optic blasts at Bobby. What the fuck is going on here? Also, something I never thought about until just right now. Is Bobby Drake naked? Why does he only have a bandana and an armband on? Do his clothes, like, turn to ice as well? Do they do they fall off of him? Do they fall apart around him? D does, does he put the bandana and armband on after he turns to ice? Is this 15-year-old boy running around naked? That's what I'm asking here. What is going on at this weird quote-unquote school? What is really being taught here anyway, Xavier? Later, the team heads into Cerebro and Professor X explains that a mutant has been captured by the military and is in a convoy on its way to Kanata. Colossus, the smartest member of this group, asks if Magneto's behind this. And Xavier's like, Nah. If Magneto was behind this, he would have leveled half this city. Don't be silly. This is ridiculous. This is some completely unrelated situation to Magneto. Now go and intercept this convoy with minimum force. Also, the mutant is Wolverine. Jean and Scott freak out, and then they have to give the others uh, Wolverine's rundown. Uh, yeah, he was a part of a Black Ops unit called Weapon X, blah blah blah, the Pentagon used it to f capture and execute mutants, then he escaped like a, two years ago, and hasn't been seen since. Charles guilt trips a 15-year-old into going on this dangerous mission, and then the X-Men head off. Meanwhile, at the convoy, the convoy screeches to a halt, and in the road ahead of them stand the X-Men. Storm uses her powers to create a storm of some storm sort, and the X-Men fight the military with maximum force. Colossus and Beast free Wolverine, then he runs out of the truck, steals a motorcycle, and rides off after Wraith, who escaped when shit was hitting the fan. Logan somehow appears in front of the road where Wraith is going, causing he and his driver to crash and fly out of the jeep. Logan's about to kill him when Gene and the others tell him to stop, blah blah blah, don't be an animal, blah, be, a, be a bigger man, blah blah blah. Then Logan is launched away by Gene because he, he doesn't give a shit and is knocked unconscious. Later at the school, Wolverine murders all the X-Men. Then Professor X appears and he's like, I'd be lying if I said I wasn't impressed by your abilities. But you weren't supposed to kill them all. Then Logan gets out of the danger room and asks if they have any VR porn. And Bobby runs into the room and tells everybody that they need to see the news right now. The president's daughter has been kidnapped by the Brotherhood of Mutants. The news feed is interrupted by Magneto, and he says that 113 mutants have been murdered by Sentinels, but their next mutant kill will be followed by the death of the president's daughter. Cyclops asks what they do, and Professor X says that they have to rescue her. Then Cyclops says that Magneto is right, but they can't let them use a girl as a bargaining chip. 
Cut to Croatia. Quicksilver, Blob, Toad, Scarlet Witch, and Mastermind sit around in this, sit around in a hotel room where they have the president's daughter hostage. Then Colossus slams a wooden beam through the floor as Beast crashes down from the ceiling. Beast frees the girl and slides down an ice slide and into a car that I assume Cyclops stole from somewhere. And Quicksilver gives chase, pulls the keys out of the ignition, and taunts Cyclops from the hood, so Cyclops blasts him. Then Wolverine fights Quicksilver as Toad attacks the others. Meanwhile, Wolverine apparently stole a cop car and grabbed the president's daughter and races down a street away from the Scarlet Witch and drives off a fucking cliff. But they're caught by the Blackbird. Don't worry, everybody's fine. Oh Jesus, what the fuck is this page? Seriously? Jean says, You do anything to impress a 17-year-old girl in a tight sweater. What the fuck? Actually, I've kind of got my eye on a telepathic 19-year-old. What the fuck? You're like a hundred years old. This isn't even the worst thing he ever does. In Ultimate Spider-Man, Peter and Wolverine get their bodies swapped and Wolverine tries to fuck Mary Jane Watson, who's like 15. And that's just what we see on pages. God knows what else he's done whenever we aren't around and reading these books. Meanwhile, the rest of the X-Men reconvene, and Storm says that she thinks Beast is dead. Then Cyclops is shot in the chest and falls to the ground as Bobby tells the others that a truck full of locals are shooting at them. Cyclops says, Stay cool, Iceman. Why do you think God created Kevlar? Then he blasts the truck and kills everybody inside. The X-Men slowly make their ways closer and closer to each other as the militia corrals them into a circle. Then Storm yells, Even Professor X was ready to sacrifice all seven of us just to save some spoiled little white chick with an old money surname. Which, I mean, like, yeah, good point. Then a large shadow appears above the gunman, and a fucking train is dropped on them. Magneto lowers himself down to the ground and says that he's having a tough time believing that Charles would send them too. Then Magneto asks how they could come here and risk their lives to defend state-sanctioned murder of their own species. Cyclops says that the world isn't so black and white, and Magneto tells him to shut up and orders them to leave. As the X-Men drive away, Scarlet Witch asks Wolver Scarlet Witch asks if Wolverine has allied himself with them. And Magneto calls her an idiot and says not to doubt him because holding off a kill means that th there's a woman he wants to bang. Ugh. I hate this. <laughs> Cut to the X-Mansion. Wolverine comes to visit Jean and the Unconscious Beast. Uh, they take a walk through the beautifully luxurious back garden and Wolverine asks how she feels. And she explains that... Uh, she believes that Professor X has great plans and ideas and that they'll get through this. And then she asks how he feels about him. You know, like a creep in a vinyl vest. Jean says that she's not sure why she likes Wolverine and wishes that they'd never met. Then Wolverine's like, So how come you find me so attractive? Then they make out, and fucking, like, Jean must lose all power in her legs, because look at this position they're in, and she just, she just goes all over him as Cyclops watches from the window, and Beast, or uh, fucking, Wolverine is like, he must smell Cyclops' is watching them, because he's like, hey, yeah, check it out, I'm fucking your girl. Later, Cyclops tells Professor X that he's leaving, so Charles releases some pleasant hormones into his bloodstream to calm him down. You know, like an insane person would if you had telepathy and wanted to control others. Cyclops asks if Professor X can read his thoughts now, and then storms out. Cut to the Savage Land. The Blackbird lands and Cyclops meets Magneto on the shoreline, and fireworks go off? Was that, was that because Cyclops arrived, or was that just a coincidental thing? Is that Jubilee doing that? An unspecified amount of time later, the tower blows up and the Brotherhood terrorists leap off a bridge onto a Blackbird piloted by Cyclops and they fly away. Cut to Washington, D.C. Oh, come on! What is this? Jean's walking around with like a Bluetooth trying to get in contact with Cyclops while she wears a red bathrobe and Wolverine's just lying on the bed drinking beers. Really? You got McDonald's? That's what you spring for when you're on, essentially, a fancy vacation in a very fancy hotel. You get fucking McDonald's? Who are you, the president? Then Jean gets back in bed and they fuck. Yep, they, they just, they go at it again. What the fuck is happening in this book? At the White House, Xavier, Storm, Colossus, Beast, and Bobby get a tour because Wolverine and Jean are busy. And the group is told that there is one final mission left for the Sentinels before they get deactivated. 
an attack on the Savage Land. The group is told that the government has never been able to find the Savage Land before until a blackbird was picked up on their satellites. Then a fucking legion of sentinels crash out of the ground somewhere and they fly to the Savage Land. Cut to the Savage Land. Magneto feeds a dinosaur as he talks to Cyclops about how terrible Homo sapiens are compared to Homo superiors, who love all living things. Cyclops asks if Magneto loves those people who are getting scraped off the walls in London, so Magneto recounts World War II. Playing the guilt card again. Cyclops says that he'll never kill for Magneto, and Magneto says that he would never ask him to, because their perfect world will be here soon. They leave the palace and walk into the city and, oh hey look, it's Gambit. Magneto and Cyclops part ways, but before they do, this happens. Oh, and Cyclops. Yeah? This might sound like an unusual request, but if Quicksilver is around tonight, would you do me a favor and address me as father when we're standing in his presence what what a petty shithead magneto is why do you do this why are you like this you asshole elsewhere scarlet witch and quicksilver are sitting alone by a lake huh i wonder what they were doing before this spoiler alert incest because that's what happens in the Ultimate Universe. Hulk's a rapist, and the fucking Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver are banging each other. I wish incest porn had, had a more mainstream appeal. Then sentinels appear in the sky, and they begin wreaking havoc and death and destruction, and they kill this woman and her baby, and... Then Magneto uses his powers to collect all the sentinels up and somehow change and reprogram them and change their prime directive to kill anyone who doesn't have a mutant gene. Then Magneto flies away with the Sentinels. Cyclops radios into Professor X and explains the situation. Yeah, I guess, yeah, he's, uh, he was playing double agent this whole time. He, he was, uh, undercover. Uh, meanwhile, Jean launches Wolverine across the room because, uh, Wolverine told her his original goal was to murder Professor X after they had sex for the upteenth time. Wolverine says that, hey, hey, I, that's not, that's not me anymore, that's not me. I turned for you, genie, and I, and I fell for Charles's ideas for a better future. Then Professor X psychically alerts all of America, and maybe the world, then Professor X psychically alerts all of America about the reprogrammed fleet of sentinels that are on their way. Cyclops makes his way back to the Blackbird as Quicksilver and Scarlet Witch say he can't do anything now, it's too late. Then Cyclops screams at Quicksilver and tells him to stand up for himself for once in his life. Then the sentinels start wrecking Washington DC as the X-Men try to fight him off. And at the burning White House, Magneto holds the naked president at his feet and prepares to drop the motorcade car on him. But then it splits in half and Charles Xavier appears behind Magneto. Then Magneto hits Charles with some car parts and pulls like 15 guns and some cameras on him. Then Wolverine stabs Magneto in the back. Symbolism. Wolverine leaps over him and slashes his chest. Then Wolverine gets a metal pipe through his chest and thrown away. And the White House explodes in a magnetic pulse that apparently overrides the nuclear arsenal of America, I guess. Elsewhere, Quicksilver appears before Marvel Girl and asks what's going on. And she says what I just said. And he races away and steals Magneto's helmet, which allows Charles to enter Magneto's mind. Oh my god, this fucking book. And Magneto retches in pain and screams, Get out of my head, you stupid cripple! Then Charles turns Magneto into a giant super magnet as Magneto begs for his life. Charles lifts the Magneto ball up into the atmosphere or stratosphere or whatever and says, Goodbye, my old friend. Give my regards to the dodo. <laughs> Later, the X-Men hang around the manor as Charles and Scott talk to one another. Charles says that eliminating the Sentinels, opening the door to Magneto's brotherhood, and gaining the trust of Homo sapiens was just phase one of the plan. Phase two will be much more interesting. 
the end. I hope you enjoyed this episode of What Is. Uh, let me know what you thought of the video and the story in the comments below. Make sure you like and subscribe if you really enjoyed it. And uh, leave me any recommendations for comic books I should read or something uh, down below as well. Uh, I'll see you next time. Bye.